I want to speak a little bit about the technology built in in uh, IB Expert that can not only be used for operations inside the IB Expert EDE, but it can also be used for automate your daily work. Uh, there is a scripting language. Perhaps you have heard about this scripting language already in the past. The scripting language is called IBE Block, and uh, a lot of people do not even know uh, that there is an almost similar language already built in inside Firebird. There is a statement possible, uh, execute block as begin, insert into category, category, whatever. I will take the following way. Create an insert, and I create a new category. For example, 99 ABC, and you can, for example, use this in this uh, construction. You can use all SQL statement multiple times, and this this technology to work with IBA blocks has some major advantages compared to the execution of individual insert statements since the whole text, the whole SQL text is directly transmitted to the Firebird server in one package. When you're doing six individual insert statements, you get six individual communications between the server and the client. And when you want to do a lot of inserts, for example, a kind of a data pump or something like this, it is sometimes really interesting to simply uh, put your data into this kind of execute block statements and simply execute this block directly to the direction of the Firebird server. This results in less network protocol overhead and it, it will increase the speed of the uh, operations automatically without changing anything in your code. So sometimes if you, are, uh, if you want to have a list of 10 operations, 100 operations, 1000 operations, simply write execute block as begin in front and this at the end, and this will make the work easier for the Firebird server, because he considers this to be only one command, and he has to do only one-time parsing and one-time optimizing and so on. You can do with this kind of block almost everything that you can also do with a procedure. So, for example, we could also do a procedure code like select uh, delete from category or something like this. You can do whatever you can do inside the procedure. You can declare some variables. And this construction, the so-called block procedure, uh, the block language is almost the same as the stored procedure language, but you do not have to decide to have a individual name for your operation. When you create a procedure, you need definitely a name, and when you create a procedure on the fly, so that you should be perhaps uh, directly re re uh, removed after you have used it, it is sometimes easier to simply create a block which can do the same as a stored procedure can do, but I hope I can be online in the next seconds. Okay, this looks good. I will need it later. Whatever you can do inside a start procedure can be done inside a block also, but you have the possibilities to use this kind of block much more flexible. For example, if you decide in runtime what code you want to have to be done inside a procedure, it's easier not to create the procedure, but simply executing this block script. What we have added inside IB Expert, you can use it inside every IB Expert tool, you can use the execute block command, but you can also use the execute IBE block command. And this, for example, results in a functionality that added a lot of things more that can be done inside 
such a function. We have, for example, the possibility to use uh, functions to create individual connections to other databases. So, for example, when I want to create a connection to this database, I can simply put the uh, drag and drop the database connection to the SQL editor, and it allows me here to create automatically some uh, commands for my local database. Create database or a create com connection block, which is already an almost ready to be used body here. And when I apply all this, I can remove my old part of the code. And here you can, for example, do things that are not available in execute block and also not available in stock procedures. For example, you can use the try command. Try, finally, try, except is directly supported. And in this case, for example, we have here a database connection which is created simply by adding a object into the variable db. And inside an IBA block, you do not have to declare variables. They are already there when you use it the first time automatically. And we can, for example, do the following thing. We can create a connection to one database from one database to another database. So I will, for example, do here the second database connection. Here's my first database. I call it DB1. And this one I call D1, which is the name here of the database file itself. And I can do the following. I should close both variables, db1 and d1 at the end. And uh, for example, I want to have a script that connects to one database, goes over in a loop over the data and checks if the data should be copied perhaps to a second database. In the second database, I will, for example, simply add a small table. This is the D1 database, create table, cat ID. What I want to do here, for example, is I simply open the database connection in the database one. You can use the command use database variable, and you open now the first connection to the first database. And now we can do, for example, a loop over the category table. We do a for select into for select id text into txt dot do begin and and inside the loop I switch to d1 to the other database and I do an insert on this table and what I can do after that is simply use db1 and I can control my own uh, transactions here. For example, if I would have used a try except block, I could have said, okay, try what, what, whatever they want to do. And uh, within the except block, I would say a, a rollback within the commit part, with the commit part in front of the except clause. So what happens when I start this? It will try to connect to the second database. It will open every record one by one, put all the data into these variables, go to the next database and do an insert there. To display some information that it really does something, I can use, for example, an IBEC underscore progress copy record. And I take the ID inside this progress. 
And what I can do next is simply starting this. There's an error. Here's a semicolon missing. It was extremely fast, so it's already over now. I simply copy the script to a temp directory and I will have a look at the table. The data should have been already there. Ah, <laughs> I should have committed the database D1 and not only the DB1. Okay. When I execute this and I go to the second database, have a look into the table, it now have all the data that come from the other database automatically. So writing such a procedure is not only for the interactive uh, way that you can do, but it is also possible to use such a procedure inside a batch file. Uh, when I do the cp.sql here inside, I have the script, which is exactly the script that you have just seen, and I can execute the script with the command line version of IB Expert, which is called ibscript.exe, and I say do copy.sql. Ah, since it did not, I did not delete the data here. I have some primary key violation. But this could be done, for example, also from the script, but I do it now here. Okay, cat is in use, I know. I think I took drop table. I didn't want to drop the table. I just want to empty the table. So please be careful with this one. This one was added inside IB Expert a few weeks ago. So sometimes do not go to the end of the last menu item in the pop-up menu. And now you see here that uh, you can do the same operation that you have created inside the um, script file automatically. So this is one of the ways how to write, for example, scripts that copy data from one source to another, copy data from uh, your production database to a history database, or do a lot of other stuff. We have functionalities inside IB Expert that you cannot only use IB Expert for accessing uh, Firebird or Interbase databases, but you can also use it for accessing processes, uh, databases, like with any ODBC connection. Here is an example. You find always a lot of examples here. And here you see that we are creating an IBE block, which will result some return values, and take these values from an ODBC database. So this is an ODBC connection to a Microsoft MDB file, for example. Create connection can not only use CT ODBC, but also CT Interbase, CT Firebird. CT Interbase and Firebird are physically almost the same internally. So in general, you uh, can use both, but we recommend to use CT Firebird. But CT ODBC, for example, can be used in the same way as we have used the script here. Where is it? So for example, if you do a conversion of data, for example, from somewhere in your production database to a ODBC database, which might perhaps should be used for web shop operations or whatever, using MySQL or whatever you have as a database used for this kind of operation, you have the possibility to create the same connection based on the type CT ODBC. You give here the connection string to your target database, 
And if you do not know the connection string uh, that you should use, simply go to a website, if the internet will work, uh, which is called connectionstrings.com. Inside this website, even if I cannot, uh, I might not reach it for whatever reason, I will remove this network. You will see all the informations here also in the videos uh, that you can download after the conference. Connectionstrings.com is a website where you can read all, almost all connection strings to any database, any ODBC database in the world. And uh, you can, for example, also use this technology to fill up directly data into an Excel file or something like this. So if somebody in your management wants you to have an automatic report to be uh, filled up in Excel with current account data or so, it's really easy to write such a script to execute the script every night from a task manager job, for example, this can be directly started within a task manager, a task scheduler. Or perhaps when you want to use it after it is uh, created, uh, you can, for example, also use some other functionalities. When you, for example, have created an Excel file from this and you want to send this Excel file automatically to customers or to your manager or whoever, it is a possibility to use the IBEC SMTP send mail functionality. We have a function inside that can be also used in a loop. For example, you have a list of email addresses where you want to send your files to. And uh, inside this loop, uh, you can directly send emails to potential people. If I would have internet access at the moment, it would be easy. Simply click on this string, press F1, and you get directly contact on the right side on our website where all the parameters are declared. Ah, I'm online. Great. Here is, for example, some examples. Here you can add some attachments like the, the files here. They can be directly attached. If you, for example, uh, are subscribed in our uh, download center for getting the newsletter of IB Expert, we use this function for sending you all the information with every newsletter. So it simply uh, is created based on this technology. And we try to find out if anyone who is subscribed in our list has a, an error message because, for example, his email address is no longer valid or his postbox, uh, his mailbox is full or something like this. We get an error message. We use the IBC pop tree connect and uh, other functions to access uh, the data that come back to our post office, to, to our mail account. And uh, we simply look in the attachment that we can download there automatically for words like invalid user or something like this. And if there is something inside the body of the email, like a string invalid user or something like this, we directly delete him from our uh, list of emails. So uh, you can automate a lot of things with this technology. I showed, for example, also some functionality uh, that we are using to be uh, to create reports. For example, IBC create report is a possibility to create a report internally based on a template which can be created with IB Expert. Really strange, the Internet Connect now. We have the report manager built in inside uh, this application inside IB Expert. And when I would try to open the network database, it will definitely not work, so it might not be uh, the bad thing at the moment to do so. I have to check up my internet connection again before I can show it to you. We have a lot of functionalities inside. I will go to a list over a list of potential functionalities that you uh, might get interested in. IBC underscore. Since Fiber 2.5, you are able to create users with SQL commands. Create user alter, user drop user, and so on. But if you, for example, have an Excel list with usernames, 
you can directly automate to create the user list based on the data that you have in your database or vice versa when somebody is using the excel file for the as a source of the users that you have in your company you can automate to copy the data from one source to another and all these users can be used by with the alter user create user and so on uh, commands directly from a script to be created automatically if you have a list of 1000 users and you want to create them uh, by hand you will have a lot of fun in your life so if you have a digital list an electronic list like an excel sheet or something like this where all the users are already entered in it is extremely easy to put some strings in front of it to, for example the ibc create user command and simply executes this from somewhere inside ib expert in the command line version or in ib expert direct or in another possible way uh, we also have a dll inside ib expert here is the dll it handles the same stuff that you can also use with the command line version or with IB Expert interactively. And here's a small example uh, how you build a small application using a Delphi source code, for example. It is really easy to implement. And it means to you that any syntax that IB Expert can do can be also implemented in your application. For example, when you want to have a functionality that you want to compare the metadata of two databases, for example, for your customer update process, you can simply use the compare metadata process uh, in IB Expert. This is the target database. This might be the original database. And I want to compare all these objects, but I do not want to compare it now. I want to compare it at my customer side. So I can simply create the IBE block from this interactively and all the parameters here are already set. Here is the source database, here is the target database and this is the command IBC compare metadata source DB, target DB and I forgot to name a file where the result should be stored and uh, which server version I use and so on. So there are a lot of possibilities that can be automated with this and I want to give you a small overview about uh, more functions for example a backup of a database a backup of a database can be done by a script you can create a script that automatically automatically starts when you do for example some operations inside your database Example, you connect with IB Expert to your database, to your production database or to your main development database and you can add such a script here in the before connect uh, part. You can add here any script and this might be for example one way to do a backup, metadata only backup which runs really fast. In the, uh, right at the moment when you do a connection to this database. A lot of people have sometimes done a lot of things in their database that they did not want to have that be done and they want to undo it. But if you, for example, add here a functionality that with every connection you do a backup of the metadata, it might be already helpful in that moment. And uh, it can also be done after connect, before connect, after disconnect, before disconnect. Uh, you can add any script here. So you can use it for backup and restore. You can use it for manipulating strings, uh, put strings from ANSI string to UTF-8 or vice versa. There is a possibility to cre create a cube based on this. Clone connection, if you want to have multiple times a connection on the same database, Compare records, uh, compare metadata, we already seen. Compare tables, when you want to check differences between two tables in two databases. You have compress functionalities. For example, if you want to start the script and extract the metadata, 
uh, with a backup, you can directly compress the metadata from the script. We have the copy data functionality, and copy data can be used, for example, to create a internal table in Firebird from any external source. So if you have, for example, data to be imported automatically from any Oracle server or wherever, you can use the copy data command where the source connection and the destination connection are set. The source connection can be any data connection, for example, also ODBC and whatever. And the uh, destination connection should be a uh, Firebird database, Firebird or Interbase. And when you combine this with the, with the commands that you want to have, uh, you can automate, for example, importing data from a data source that is written, for example, in Excel or in any other database that is accessible with ODBC. We have copy file functions. We have uh, functions here for uh, copy clipboard. We can put automatically things to clipboard or get things from the clipboard, create connection, create database, create report. We already had create user. The next uh, part here, uh, a drop database, drop user. These are data set functions. We have a set of in-memory data set operations that you can do with this kind of script. So if you want to have a very specific way of sorting or analyzing the data, which might be a little bit more complex than a regular SQL statement uh, can do for you, you can do it directly in memory. We have the possibility to execute a script from inside the script. We can extract file directory, extract report, Export report is it, uh, for example, export report allows you to create the report uh, in a format like uh, JPEG, PDF, uh, HTML, and whatever. And when you are creating such a report, uh, you can directly use the file and send it by email afterwards, for example. We use it for customer projects in web applications really often. You have functionalities. Force directories, some of you might know this already, you can get information about uh, file date time, file access, and file size, and so on. A customer of us uh, uses the IBE script with the command IBC get files uh, over his network drive. He has a uh, really large network drive, and he simply uh, gets a copy of all the directories from this network drive with this way and he looks for every file he found for the size of the database file, for the size of the file, for the date of the file, and for the file name in his Firebird uh, application, in his Firebird database. And he simply says, when I have already the same file with the same data, with the same date and the same size in my database, I simply check the file with a checksum if it is still the same. And if it is the same, I remove the original file and I replace it by a link of the network. And he found in his network directory one file 1,400 times. So it took a lot of space on his network drive, but uh, he was really afraid about losing these files. Only deleting this without knowing where they are for is not a good idea. He simply copies his old file system inside a Firebird database for a kind of a backup of reasons. One idea the customer invented, perhaps you might think about similar things. We have a lot of functionalities here regarding file operations. You might know this when you are a Delphi programmer, you might know this uh, way because uh, in Delphi binary file operations are done in the same way. We have the possibility to get a list of users of the specific database. There are specific HTTP operations. So, for example, we have in one project the requirement that we need to know the current, uh, current prices of, for example, gold, silver, and all the high-end material. And we simply use this kind of function, HTTP GET, to take a website somewhere from the Internet, download the website from the Internet, and get the data into the script, and simply look into the script for specific uh, templates 
And within these templates, we directly extract then the current value for the dollar, exchange rate for the uh, silver price, for the gold price, and so on. And this is done automatically one time but per day. And nobody needs to do it manually. Because when you do it manually, you might do it one week, but afterwards you will never do it again because you forget that you have to do this every day. And this can be really easily automated. For a customer, we also created a small uh, a small script that downloads data from uh, stock stock exchange places like uh, German uh, Deutsche Aktien Börse and they directly uh, want to react for example if a price goes very different between the current price and the older price they want to get a message automatically and we created this with a simple script that simply downloads the current data from the web server, checks the current price with the price of last week or last day or so, and if the price differs in a specific rule, we send him an email on his uh, phone. So you can do a lot of things based on such a technology without doing a real programming. We also have operations for getting to, uh, data from any files or write data to any files. We have uh, XML operations supported here. We have POP3, POP3 operations. You can shut down a database, bring it online with this functionality. We have possibility, for example, to automate, to deactivate procedures. We have a feature in IB Expert that you can deactivate procedures, for example. Deactivate procedures means simply we replace the original source code with some command parts in front and at the end. We do not delete the procedures because it makes no sense to delete all the procedures because when you use your procedures from references, from calculated field and so on, it is uh, always a problem to delete everything in the right order. And what we can do is, uh, for example, that we say, we simply call the comment body functionality and we get a comment around the body for a specific procedure. We have random functionalities. We have regular expression functionalities. Recompile procedure, recompile trigger. Uh, when I go to this database for a short time, we have here some procedures. And deactivate procedures, for example, can be done in this way. And uh, as you see here, it simply re uh, does not remove the procedure. It simply deactivates the procedure by simply putting the source code as a comment and putting the word exit behind it. And th this does it automatically. With five procedures, it's not a big deal, but with 5,000, it's a big deal. Yes? It's no problem. We have a specific template for our own comments. We can, we only do this comments, this kind of comments. And uh, when you start a, your own comment, you uh, will not start with this multi-line comment. And when you have a, a comment here in between, for example, it's no problem. Okay, this one will uh, remain here, but uh, we can test it for you. For example, we will here have some old style comment. Uh, it's already deactivated. I will activate the procedure first. see it. We use our internal tags also around your comments to make them also invalid in that moment. And uh, when we reactivate all the procedures, only our tags are removed, not your tags. Do you have a concrete example? Yeah. 
Uh, we do here do not always do an exit we uh, was selectable when we have a suspend uh, before we use here uh, suspend yeah we uh, d we decide if it should be a have an exit if there is not a selectable stock procedure you will get an exit if it is a selectable stock procedure and you have already uh, somewhere suspend in your original source code you get a uh, suspend here with an empty set of records. And this can be done automatically, for example. Uh, so uh, we have some functionality uh, also in the scripting language. Uh, to get the, the procedures deactivated or reactivated. I have to look where it was. Don't know at the moment but somewhere it should be. Recompile procedure, for example. Um, when you're doing a backup of a database using Fiber 2 or using Fiber 1.5 and you're doing a restore with Fiber 2.5, it sometimes has invalid source code inside your procedures. So it's sometimes really hard to find out what parts of the source code cannot be compiled. And the functionality, recompile procedure, uh, we found out for whatever reason that sometimes a recompile of a procedure is, uh, makes some operations faster than not recompiling the procedure, especially after a backup and restore. Since as far as I know, when doing the backup, the, the entries of the system tables, for example, the binary code, which is in the BLR column in the system, system table RDB dollar procedures, is simply copied to the database file, to the backup file, and within the uh, restore, it is simply copied from the restore, of, uh, from the backup file to the new database again. It is not recompiled in that moment. So it is possible that you have invalid source code inside your, opera, uh, in, inside your database, so that is in that moment perhaps impossible to compile the whole source code of all your objects and therefore, you can do a test here with recompiled selectivity of all indices we saw in another session. Recompile all star procedures, recompile all triggers. So especially when you go from an older version to a newer version of the database, it makes sense that you do a recompile of all trigger, recompile of all star procedures. But if you are, for example, a software manufacturer and you want to distribute your application to for example, as we do in a customer project, to 6,500 insurance agents, uh, it is really hard to open the database for all the 6,500 people and to do it from the, command, uh, from the interactive way. You will definitely have no good idea to do so. So it is possible to do the same recompile of all star procedure automatically using this kind of command here. And especially when we are doing an update, uh, we were starting with this project with Fiber 2.1 and we currently think about switching to Fiber 2.5 already since it has really some really good things uh, that we could have, that we need in this project. We can definitely uh, do a backup in 2.1, inst uninstall 2.1, install 2.5, do a restore with 2.5 but in that case, it might be still the problem that the procedures are not recompiled from Firebird. Firebird does not recompile within the backup restart process. And how do you uh, recognize if you get an error and recompile the triggers? Try accept. Simply exception handling in that moment. You get an exception when you get this error. And then, for example, you can get the information, the IBEC error message, for example, in this variable you can see uh, what the error code was and in general you get an information this procedure is not has no in, uh, valid source code for example okay regular expressions here's a technology that we have uh, used for testing demonstrations but uh, it's not in public release uh, documented but it still works there are user forms you can directly create a formula from a script we also have the possibility, I have not found the time to 
write a example, a usable example, but the IBE run, run, run. Where is it? Uh, we have one function, XX script. The XX script functionality, for example, uh, gives you a possibility to create individual dialogues from the script. We have the interpreter functionality inside, so yeah, yeah, that you can, for example, run a script that does a with t form dot create, with t button dot create, with t label dot create, and so on, which gives you the possibility to have a user interface, for example, for asking the customer, the user for parameters or something like that. Uh, we have not yet this part documented as good as it could be, uh, but I hope I will find the time in the future already some in some area. So a simple way uh, what you can do, for example, with this database would be, uh, I will show you a simple way what we, for example, do with such a IBE block. Let's think about the following issue. We have, for example, this database, and this database currently has a size of, what is it, 42 megabytes. And when I do a backup and restore, it takes some time. If I would have been online now on my system, I could have shown you somewhere else the functionality. I hope I can go to this. Uh, it seems that the internet is a little bit unstable here also. Yesterday I checked out this for example. Here's a script that does a backup and it also does a restore. And within this connection string we're doing a simple uh, backup and restore of uh, this database. And when I execute this, Hopefully the internet connection is still active. It takes about, uh, it's no longer active, so we can close it back. It takes about, I think, four minutes, the whole process. The database is much more complicated than the database that we have here inside. And even if I cannot show it to you due to the problem in the database, I can show it to you here what we do what I call a kind of a turbo backup uh, functionality. I use it with execute IBE block as begin. And the first thing I do is simply execute statement create shadow one and I do it for D, DB, no, DC, DB1 underscore two five underscore shd dot fdb I call it in this way. This operation can be done in every SQL editor. You can also do this part inside ISQL or whatever. When you create a shadow, a physical file copy is created and this runs extremely fast. But it uh, should be started with the commit. So defining a shadow without committing it does not really create the shadow file, but only creates the, the header part of the shadow file, that the file is already there. When you're doing the commit, the Firebird server itself does a physical copy of all data pages inside the database automatically. And what we do in the next step is a little bit tricky, but it works. We go to the system table, which is called RDB dollar files. And in the system table, RDB dollar files, we have the file name inside. I can demonstrate it to you simply by doing only this part. I should have be set here some required. Okay, I will do this in a second. Okay, it created the shadow, it was extremely fast, and now when I do the commit, the physical file is written. It 
goes really fast, also with large databases. And after that, we have the information here inside this table that there is a shadow file here where we have the current shadow of the current database. And what I do here to avoid the following problem, if I do a drop shadow, the original shadow file is deleted. I simply do a kind of a trick that I simply say I want to have an update in the RDB dollar files. I do a simple update without a where clause because I currently think that there should be no active shadow remaining afterwards. And I commit this. And now I do the drop shadow command. So the whole script does the following. It creates a shadow, commits the operation, changes the file name to any invalid part. And after that, drops the shadow. Typically dropping the shadow also drops the shadow file. But if you remove the reference to the file name, it cannot drop the shadow file. And when I do here this as an end, uh, and start this. Ah, shadow one already exists. Yes, it's correct. Drop shadow one. So now it's dropped. And due to the fact that I have not manipulated this uh, actively, you see how many shadows are active for the database in the database statistics. Here you would have seen that uh, the shadow file is existing. And what I do now is simply running this script to make the fastest ever possible way to do a backup and restore like operation to have a live copy of your database. That's all. So this took about 31 hours. I doubt that. <laughs> this will be definitely not true. Ah, I have to delete the file manually before I can recreate it again. IBC underscore delete file. And we can, for example, typically do this with a if file exists and so on. Okay, <laughs> I have to drop it again manually because it was already drop shadow one. Okay. Okay, this was a time. Still a little bit stupid here. Don't know what it's. <laughs> 31 hours. Not a bug, it's a feature or something like this. And what you can do with a shadow file is also really easy. Clone registration info. And here is my shadow file. Cannot attach active shadow file. It is internally remarked as an active shadow file. So you can directly use the following command line. gfix d underscore c underscore db. Uh, was it the right? Okay, I have to put it sometime in my search path. Now it was activated. And now I can use it as a regular database. So implementing the same thing again inside uh, the shadow, uh, inside my script, for example, can now 
to the IBEC exec. Here we might perhaps use the gfix with a path and so on and a minus a to activate the shadow automatically. I've tested this with also with larger databases. It simply depends on the speed of your environment, how far, how long it takes to create a backup copy in this way. It's a funny trick to do this in this way, but it still works. It's no, from my perspective, uh, never been a problem somewhere in Firebird or something to make something unstable. But it's the fastest way to create a copy of large databases, whatever you think about and backup and other tools. Uh, when you have, uh, we have used this, for example, uh, at a customer who is using uh, the storage area network system, uh, which costed uh, almost about 1 million euro, and it writes and reads more than one gigabyte per second for this machine, and it was extremely fast to create a backup of a really large database there. So simply a small trick for having fast backup copies in the runtime. Yeah. The major problem uh, that you can do not some operations that I need here from inside, uh, for example, ISQL or something like this. Uh, but you can use the same operations from any environment. So the, the SQL commands, this one here, and this update, and this drop shadow can be run without any limitation. It can also run outside any IB Expert tool. But here I have the control over all the stuff. So, for example, I cannot do this without a commit. I cannot do this without a commit here in that moment. But when you do it, for example, from a .NET environment or so, it's also no problem if you control simply that the, the file name that is a target is not there when you create the shadow because the shadow cannot overwrite its file automatically. But it can be used in any environment. It's no problem. It's no special trick that only works in IB Expert. Yeah. The, this is uh, possible while people are working on it. Doing a file copy while people are working on the physical database file is not a good idea. Okay, in that case you might uh, have an alternative for it. This runs already since I think uh, Firebird 1.0 in this way. You can use it in this way already with older Firebird version and uh, all the database begin backup was not available in that time. <laughs> okay, I think it's now over for the session. I think we have again the last coffee break and afterwards the last session. Not the direct last session, but uh, the combination of last sessions then. Okay. Uh -huh.